Even the Wall Street Journal says it's getting hard to find religion in the religious bands. Josh McDowell says church youth have embraced a worldview that blinds them to the difference between right and wrong. I don't think he recognizes the cause, but he recognizes the result. Many people ask me about rap. So I'm just going to give you one example of rap that will show you why I say it's absolutely wrong. He works. We got our spirit in control. I believe we want our melody to be the prime element in our music. I'm not going to take time to go into it tonight, but our minds ought to respond to the harmony. That would be the chords or the vertical aspect of the music. That's probably the hardest one to get at. So I want to skip over that one tonight. If you, again, if you're interested in that, it's in the language of music videos. But I do want to get to the third one. Your spirit corresponds to the melody. Your body responds to the rhythm. Somebody says, well, what's wrong with rhythm? Nothing. Any more than there's something wrong with having a body. There's nothing wrong with having a body, provided it's in its proper relationship to your mind and your spirit. And I think the best illustration I could give you would be to show you where the word rhythm comes from. The Greek verb that it comes from is rel. The H is the accent in the Greek. That's why we even put the H in the word rhythm. And the best translation would be to flow, or probably, even better yet, to pulse. A body that has no pulse is buried. Music that has no rhythm is buried. Don't sing it in church. We let our music get lifeless and apathetic our young people will add artificial life to it. And that's exactly what they're doing. You get too much pulse, and you're sick. You get too much rhythm, and the music is sick. I'd like for us to sing together, Jesus Loves Me. All right? Just stands it, forget the chorus, just sing the sentence. Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Fine, that's great. Now, I think that's the way it ought to be sung. Listen to this example. Jesus loves me. This I know. The Notice how he's sliding all around on the pitches. Can't find them. Tells me so. Making it as breathy as he can. Anybody want to dance? By the way, who does that sound like? <laughs> You're right. Elvis Presley. Elvis the pelvis. But, he but that's a well-known Christian singer. Ah, I submit to you folks. Yeah. Now you may listen to think that music's all right. I think it's over the line. But the problem is, you see, we hear so much of that, it doesn't seem so bad. Say that guy's kind of a light beat in the background. That's what we call soft rock or sweet rock. Not so bad, right? Well known song. We all love that song, don't we? Amazing grace, how sweet. Now you get the rock beat. That's it. Not as hard as some of the other stuff I've played, but it's still a rock beat. He's having trouble finding the pictures too. Or how about
How about this one? And this may hit home. I'm sorry. Devin Rockby Fair. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Had a pastor call me. I was supposed to be in his church. This was in the spring. I was supposed to be in his church that fall. And he mentioned a particular artist. And he said, um, do you think the artist has problems? I said, yes, I do. I think it has tremendous problems. But after he mentioned the name of the artist, he said, my wife took our young people to one of his concerts last Saturday night. And he only sang two bad songs. I said, Pastor, that's my problem. I said, I think you'd be better off taking them to a hard rock group where they know they're going to get hard rock than to take them to a concert by a man who claims to love the Lord and has a beautiful voice, and then he slips the rock songs in, and the kids think it's okay because he's doing it. The worst thing I know about is a mixture of error and truth. Where would you draw the line? I submit to you that our goal ought to be as close to God as we can and as far away from worldliness as we can. And I'm not saying that all you should listen to is Christian music, but I'm saying any music you listen to ought to be following the principles of the Word of God. Because when you have the pulse under control where it belongs, then the body is well. When the rhythm is under control, then you've got good music, whether it's secular or sacred. Because <laughs> rhythm is like salt must be used under strict control. All it takes is a little bit too much and you can spoil the food. For instance, let's take a symphony orchestra, okay? Symphony orchestra, usually about 100 musicians, one or two percent rhythm, but about three or four guys. You have somebody plays timpani, one guy plays the cymbals, and, and then they usually play a couple of notes and rest several hundred measures. <laughs> At the most, one or two percent rhythm, like what we're gonna play for you right now, okay? to make the music exciting. And I'm not saying you should just listen to classical music either. You like old romantic songs that have good theme and nice melody? Fine. Don't sing them in church. <laughs> but for your home? Fine. What amazes me is, is there's so much music that is available for a Christian to listen to, not how little it is. There's lots of it. You don't have to go to the world to find something that will satisfy your musical taste. But you take a rock combo, have an electric guitar. <laughs> that's a rhythm instrument, folks. You have a rhythm guitar, that's definitely a rhythm instrument. Then you have a drummer, that's definitely rhythm. Then you have a lead guitar who sometimes plays a melody. <laughs> you say, how about the keyboardist? Hard telling what he's playing. Rock, by its very nature, is at least 75% rhythm. Oh, I realize there are different gradations of it. You know, you can water it down a little bit and make it sweet rock or soft rock and not quite so hard. I understand that. But I think the category as a group, even the people who are in it, admit that the, the basic factor of rock is its rhythm. And if we're going to prove what is acceptable unto the Lord, we're going to have to follow God's principles. Not even what Frank Garlock says, but God's principles. And I hope I've whetted your appetite to study the Word of God and see if you can apply God's principles to music. Music